Welcome to the second part of this tutorial series on developing a painterly share in Unreal Engine. In the first part, we took care of the diffuse of our painterly material, and in the second part, we're gonna add a stylus, specular, and shadow. So let's get right into it. But I feel like we're missing something here because I would really like to see a little bit of a highlight here that is also following our directional light. So let's take care of it. I'm gonna go back to my material and I'm actually gonna copy the texture object, the noise strength, normal from height map, all of this, the sky atmosphere and the dot. So all the nodes besides the animated UVs until the dot product. And then I'm gonna be pasting them down here. Okay. So out of the UVs here, we can add our animated UVs because we want the specular to be animated as well. And then we want to expand over this dot product. Basically, what we want to do is getting the sky atmosphere, light direction, and the camera vector. So basically what we're asking the shader is, how much does my surface normal align with the angle of perfect reflection? So when I'm pointing at the material with my camera, because the more it aligns, the brighter I would like the specular to be. So we want to get the sky atmosphere light direction and the camera vector, and then add these two vectors together. And we will get a vector that points in between these two. And then we want to normalize that to find the halfway vector and plug that into the dot product. So we would get, what we would get out of this is basically a highlight that will follow my camera direction. Okay, now we want to actually subtract a little bit out of this specular because it's a bit too strong. So out of the dot product, let's add a subtract node. And then we want to right click on the B and promote to parameter. And I'm gonna be calling this specular strength. I'm gonna give it a value of 0 0.8, but you can really choose any value you want. Now it's already going to start looking a little bit better, so it's a bit smaller than before. And I also want to give me a chance in the material instance to make the edges of this specular a little bit smoother in case I want to change the way that the surface looks like. So I'm going to add a divide node by pressing D on my keyboard. And then again, I'm going to right click on the B, promote to parameter, and I'm going to call it specular edge smooth. And the default value is going to be zero because I don't want it to be smooth at all at first. Okay, now I want to have a way to control the opacity of my specular. So I'm going to add a multiply node, plug the divide node to the B, and then right click on the A, promote to parameter, and call it specular opacity. And for now, I'm going to keep it at a value of 0 0.5. Okay, let's clamp these values between 0 and 1 by adding a saturate node. And then let's say I wanted to give myself an option in the material instance to add a color to the specular. I could do that by just multiplying the output of this saturate, plugging that into the B, and then adding, by pressing three on the keyboard, a vector three node and convert that to parameter. I, I can call it specular color. And of course, at first I want it to be fully white. And then if I want to change the color, I can always do it later with the material instance. Okay. Out of this multiply node, I'm just going to add a named reroute declaration node like we did with the diffuse, and I'm going to call it specular because we're done with our specular. So if I right click on this and start previewing the node, you can see that it's looking pretty cool already. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. I'm going to select all these nodes. I'm going to press C. I'm going to call this specular and show the bubble. And then I'm going to move it down here. Okay, so now we could be either adding the specular to the base color, or if we want it to be always at its brightest, we could actually be plugging this to the emissive color, and that's what I'm going to be doing now. So I'm going to drag out of the emissive color, and I'm going to add the specular right here. And now you can see that we have our specular. I'm going to be putting the threshold a little bit higher over here because I feel like the occlusion starts a bit too late. So I'm just going to go down here and Put this a little bit higher. Okay, now if we save and we go back to our stage, you can see that we have our specular that actually being driven by the light direction. Awesome. And if we rotate the sphere around, that is working as well. Okay, so I think it's time to take care of our shadow over here because I would like it to look a little bit more stylized. Right now it's really flat and I would like to add a little bit of texture to it. So let's go back to our material and take care of that. 
the approach here for the shadow is going to be similar to the specular and the diffuse in the sense that we will be using the sky atmosphere light direction and the dot product because we will still need to somewhat calculate the direction of a specific vector compared to the directional light. So I'm just going to be copying those and then pasting them down here. And I'm going to be plugging the A input of the dot product directly to the sky atmosphere uh, light direction. And now I want to use a different approach compared to the vertex normals. I could be using that as well, and it would work. I just wanted to show you a different approach, which is also compatible with the um, planar objects, so with the cube or the plane. So if rather than taking our vertex normals, we were to get the world position, the absolute world position, and the object position of our sphere, and then subtract one to the other, and then normalize that, we will be basically targeting all those vectors that start from the middle of the sphere and then point outwards. So intrinsically, we would be treating the normals of any object as if they were spherical. So if I plug the normalize output to the B of the dot product, and I start previewing that, you can see that we will get basically the same result as if we had just plugged the vertex normals. That's because we're dealing with a sphere. But if I change to the cube, for example, we would get a very different result because the planes of the cube are flat. So by using the normalized subtraction between the absolute world position and the object position, we're treating the normals of the cube as if they were the ones of a sphere. Okay, so let's continue now. And let's add a power node to soften a bit the intensity of this dot result. And then I want to add a multiply node where I want to multiply the power with my texture sample, which is going to be my messy texture that we already saw in the diffuse. I'm going to plug it to the A of my multiply. And then out of the UVs, I'm going to add, add the animated UV node so that also the texture of the shadow will be animated. Okay, after that, I want to make sure that the result of this is clamped between a value of 0 and 1. And then I'm going to add an add node. And I want to make sure that I have a way of adjusting the strength of the shadow, so make it more or less visible. So I'm going to right click on the B input of this add node and promote that to parameter. And I'm going to call it shadow strength. And for now, I'm going to give it a shadow strength of 0 0.2. OK, so this will be our group of nodes for the shadow. So I'm just going to drag out of the add and add a reroute named a declaration node that I'm going to be calling shadows, just like we did for the specular and the diffuse. Then I'm going to select all these nodes, press C to add a comment, and comment it shadows. All right, so what we did here is similar to our specular approach. And if we were to plug the specular into the opacity mask, we would basically just get this part of the sphere because the rest of the specular value here is completely black. So I can show you if I plug the specular to the opacity mask, the only thing that would be left is the specular. And the shadow, as you can see, is pretty stylized. So this gets pretty close to what we want to achieve, but we would like our shadows only to be applied to the shadows, not to the entire base color of our sphere. And there is actually a pretty smart node that would do this for us without getting into complex mathematical equations. That's called the shadow pass switch. So if you hover over it, it tells you already that this shadow pass switch allows materials to define specialized behavior when being rendered into the shadow map. And that's exactly what we want. So by default, we would like our base material to be rendered at full opacity. So we want it to be fully visible. And when we're rendering the shadow, we want it to be our shadows. So if we plug this to the opacity mask now, you will see that our shadow will be stylized like we want it. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. But I feel like the silhouette of the sphere is kind of breaking the illusion of a painterly shader because I would like it to be a little bit chipped around it as if someone actually sketched the sphere in Photoshop or Procreate or something. So the edges of it wouldn't be as refined. And right now the edges of the sphere are perfect. So let's take care of that. So first of all, I want to isolate the silhouette of the sphere whenever I'm looking at it. 
And to do that, we want to get the camera vector and the vertex normals. And then we want to make a dot product between the two. So if I preview this node now, you will see that anything that is on the outline of the sphere will revert to black. And anything that is on the inside is white. Okay, so out of the dot product, let's add an absolute node to make it double-sided. And then we want to adjust a little bit the intensity of this outline. So let's add a value of one and let's multiply a value of 0 0.5. So with this, we basically just trim up the range of our outline and now it's even softer. So let's saturate this remap value to clamp it to a value between zero and one. And then we want to add a power node and then press S on our keyboard and click on an emptier of the graph to add a scalar parameter that we're gonna call inner erosion strength, where the inner erosion is gonna be this like chipped off outline of the sphere. And I'm gonna set a value of three to the power node. And this will basically soften the gradient between the outline and the inner side of the sphere. All right, so at this point, we want to add a little bit of texture to this outline so that it doesn't look like a perfect outline, but is a bit sketched out. In order to do that, we want to get the camera vector and isolate the X and Y axis. And we do that with a component mask where we isolate the R and G, so the X and the Y axis of our vectors. And then we want to multiply it for a value to adjust the tiling of the texture. So I'm just going to right click on the B and promote this to parameter. I'm going to call it inner erosion tiling. And I want this texture to be a little bit tiled, so I'm going to set it to a value of 2. OK, and now let's plug this to the UVs of our texture sample. And this time I want the texture to be T underscore brush strokes packed, which is basically a packed texture that has different values in the R, G, B, and alpha channel, where the alpha channel is this almost like felt like texture brush strokes, which has a lot of details and very different gradients. So I like that. I think it's going to add, add a lot of texture to our erosion. So for that, we need to drag out of the alpha mask, and then let's add a little bit of color correction to it to make it more or less contrasty. So I'm going to add a multiply node with a value of 0 0.25, and then add an add node of 0 0.25. So basically what this would do is make the texture a little bit more opaque and bright. And since this is driven from the camera vector, it will be always following my camera view. Okay. Now we want to add the noise pattern or from the texture to our outline gradient. So I'm just going to add a multiply node. And we're going to plug the power node to the A and then the output pin of this add node to the B. So and now if I start previewing the node, you can see that the result of this is very soft. And I want to add a step node after this multiply to make it very hard edge. So I'm going to add a step of a value of 0.1. And now you will really understand what I mean by shift off, because with the step node, we can really create this kind of sketched out outline. Okay, so we're working with a sphere, so this step will be irrelevant. But just in case we want to use this further with cubes or cylinders, we want to multiply the step node with the vertex normals ran through a curvature filter. And we have a material function for that. So this curvature filter was borrowed from Gabriel de Lubier, fantastic blog on the stylus painterly shader that he had developed. And this filter basically separates the curve from the flat surfaces. It checks using the DDY and DDX nodes whether the normal vector changes from one pixel to the next. So for curved surfaces, it will be resulting in a value of one, so fully wide. And for flat surfaces, it will be resulting in a value of zero, so fully black. And if you want to know more about using the DDX and the DDY nodes in Unreal Engine, I would really recommend you to see these procedural normals using DDX and DDY video from Prismatica Dev because it's really informational. All right, let's go back to our material. So we have applied the curvature filter to our vertex normals. And if I start previewing the node, it should be fully white. Perfect, because we're on a fully curved surface. But if I switch to the cube, for example, it will be fully black because my planes will be fully flat. 
while with a cylinder, the caps will be black because they're flat planes, while the body of it will be fully white because it's fully curved. So this will just to make you understand what this curvature filter did visually. Okay, so let's plug the output of this curvature filter into the multiply node. And if we start previewing this, you will see that the outline will be white and the inside will be black. But we want to plug this into the opacity mask. So if we did that, we would just see this outline part of the sphere. We want actually the inside to be white and the outside to be black. To do that, let's just drag out of the multiply node and add a one minus node to invert this effect. And now let's just go to our material domain and I'm just going to drag it down here. This time we won't be creating any reroute declaration nodes, but you could if you wanted to. We're going to directly plug the one minus result of our inner erosion into the default of the shadow path switch because we want this to be applied to our base color. Okay, now this is starting to look like something quite cool, right? Okay, so let's select all these nodes and then press C to add a comment. And I'm going to call it inner rim erosion and then show the bubble. So let's just save and check out how material looks like in our map. And it looks pretty good. Thank you for sticking around until the end of this second part of our tutorial series. And in the next one, we're going to be adding some nice outlines to our sphere. See you there.